Okay, so now we're actually continue on to making our last piece, which is a little bushing that's going to go under here. I was planning on having this done sooner, but uh, my daughter was born uh, two weeks ago, so I've been going on that adventure. So now I have some time at the shop. My wife has allowed me some time in the shop to finish up this project. Let's put it that way. So, uh, after the last video, I actually went... I actually knocked that off on my bench. <laughs> And then I went back in here, and I decided that the gap right here was too much. It was just way too big. And if we're going to go through all this trouble, why have a sloppy looking dial? So I went back in there and readjusted it, and I got it to pretty much take a 5,000 shim in there, and that's our gap. And that allows us to spin perfectly fine. So this is all tightened down. This nut is tightened. Now, obviously, it's a little split nut. The, the stem goes through the middle, you can see that. So I had to make a tool to get it off. Now, this is just an old spade bit. What you do is you cut off the tip, you grind the edges down to fit the screw, and then cut the notch out in the middle to use as like a little spanner, and that allows you to get the nut off without doing any damage or without damaging it any further. This is the original nut and it's you know seen some abuse. So we'll end it, we'll end up remaking one of those eventually down the line, but for this video we're using that. So now what we need to know, we know that our bearing come that we're gonna that's gonna sit in here is gonna come out to flat with this surface here. So what we need to find out is actually the distance from here to our dial or to our hand wheel from this face to our hand wheel that we need to actually make a little bushing that looks like this. Now these are the original measurements here. For the original one, I'm assuming I'm gonna be different, so I definitely wanna measure this up. And again, you're probably gonna to wanna to just go through yours and take a quick measure on yours to make sure also. And I will end up getting some drawings of this down. As I said, I've been a little bit busy as of late. So, let's attach this and tighten this down okay. so I mean we're, we're, we're touching the flat we're not wrench tight but we're tight enough to do what we have to do push this all the way back now we have to accurately measure from here to here now an easy way to do that is to use an adjustable parallel and a these are kind of invaluable. You'll most likely be using these more as a transfer tool for measurements than you ever will as an actual parallel. So we're going to stick one in here and we're going to have it touch that face and touch the shoulder of this. Give it a little squish to make sure everything's compacted. Take our little screwdriver and we're going to tighten those down. And now we can measure across this to get a nice accurate measurement there. Okay, so remove that. And we're looking at roughly from there to there uh, 987 thousandths. So I will get my one inch micrometer and we'll mic over this to get an accurate measurement. And that is going to be my length of this bushing from here to the end. Okay, let me just show you what we got going on here. So the entire length of this bushing is gonna be 987 thousandths, which is the length that we just measured using the adjustable parallels. The actual width here, okay, this diameter here that is where the actual dial is gonna ride, so that's gonna be 624 thousandths. This little flange here is going to be the width of the bearing, and that is 935 thousandths. And then this little flange here is going to be 100 thousandths. The actual length of that flange doesn't matter as long as it's under a quarter inch, and the entire piece is that 987 thousandths, at least for me. That's the distance that I have. Yours may differ slightly. So right now we just have a one inch piece of stock in here. We're going to square this up. And we also have to put a half inch hole down the middle, which we're going to drill and ream. Uh, but we're going to work on the outside right now. So let's just face this off and we can take this outside 
diameter down to 935 thousandths, which is the actual width of one of the bearings or the carry of the bearings, so that way there that flange makes nice contact with that hardened washer. And again, we're doing this on the nine inch with the collar chuck just because it's way easier doing it like this. And as far as alloys go, doesn't much matter. This is a uh, mystery metal, more than likely, this is kind of just in my scrap bin. More than likely this is 1018. And uh, it's just a bushing, so it doesn't really much matter. You can also make it, if you're worried about wear for any reason, you can make it out of brass, or bronze, if you want to, you can go crazy with it. But you're only spinning that dial on it every once in a while, and there's no force behind it, so it doesn't really matter much. I'm going to change out that tip because I don't like those long stringy chips. Okay, so we have this at 935 thousandths. Our next diameter is 624 thousandths and we want that. Uh, we want to leave 100 thousandths at the end. So we want that for a length of uh, 887 thousandths. So 987 thousandths from front to back minus the hundred thousand flange leaves us hundred thousand so uh, let me get my carriage indicator in place here okay Okay, we should be at about 635 there, pretty close, and we are at 636. So I'm going to go ahead and take Ten thousand.
come into my zero, change my speed, and we're gonna face out. Okay, it's gonna break this edge and break this edge here. Now it should be pretty close to where we want to be. And we are at six. There it is. There we go. All right, so now I gotta put a half inch hole down the middle of that. Okay. I'm gonna drill. Center drill. And we're going to drill straight through that piece. Alright, so I have that drilled and it is reamed. Now we're ready to pot this off. Okay, so now we're getting ready to pot this off. And the problem you're going to have is if we use our dial indicator to measure, we have to take into account the width of this blade. Because we can't just touch because we'll be measuring off this side of the blade and we actually want to measure off this side of the blade. So what we do is we come in here and take a scale, something nice and flat, and you'll be able to wiggle it here. And then you'll be able to catch. All right, right there, I can feel that we're touching. And now we're not. And right there. Right there, I can feel that we're touching that blade. So we're going to call that zero. And we want 987 thousandths. is right there and we can kind of confirm here that we're just about where we want to be and what I'm gonna do is because we're gonna end up facing this off and I'm gonna take an extra five just as a little bit of insurance because we're gonna end up facing this off anyway so I can just face off that little bit of extra and this way here, we're just playing it safe, is all. Lock the carriage down. Okay, so according to my measurements, I have 10 thousandths that need to come off of that. So I'll just put it in the 716's pallet. Get my turning tool. Come in here. We're just going to touch. We're just nicking right there. So I'm going to set zero on my indicator here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take... I take seven.
here. Break that edge. And break that edge. So, let's see where that gives me right now. And we are actually at 987 on the nose. Yeah, 987, 986 and a half, somewhere in that. Good enough for me. Okay, so now we can fit everything up. Okay, so now the moment of truth. See if everything fits. So, let me just turn this so I can see it. That is snug. Then put on the other bearing. Then a little bushing. Actually, there's a burr on this edge here. There it is. Okay, so now there's two other things I need to do. One, I need to mark the zero on this, and the other thing is I need to put the key into the ball crank here. Now, I don't have, I didn't have a, a, um, a ball end mill small enough to be able to do it on the mill, so I'm just gonna do it by hand, not a huge thing. And this here, Pretty good there. Okay, so now all I have in the mill is a scribe and I use my DRO to find the center and I set this in a collet at the same orientation that it is on the leg so we can get that line right in the center. I don't have an end mill small enough to make a slot in this. You can also do this on the lathe by doing it basically the same way and using a 60 degree threading tool or a, or something like that along those lines in your, cross, in your tool holder and just run it sideways across it this way. So, and I'm just using my DRO to get the uh, length every time. And I'm only just taking a couple of thousands here back and forth
Okay, now we got that little slot in there. Now time for the last little finishing touch. We're gonna put our zero in here and you can make a jig or some way to do this, but I'm just gonna do it by eye. And we should be okay with that. Okay, so <laughs> of course the light is right where I want to show you. Okay, so our last little thing is here's the original screw, and you can see there's a slot right here. Now what that is, is that takes an eighth inch pin and that basically locks the hand wheel to this shaft so that it can't move. So I don't have an eighth inch ball end mill, which is the easiest way to do that. But what you can do if you don't have that, is you put the handle on there and that hole sticks out beyond that a little bit. Get yourself an eighth inch drill bit very carefully. Okay, so now we got this all squared away. We have one more operation to do. And that is going to be, let me just get this in. This little. Alrighty, that's in there. That's nice and tight and everything works now we have one final operation that we need to do this collar here I can spin with my hand okay we don't want that to move this dial is big enough and heavy enough that it's really easy for that to turn on the shaft so we actually have to take and we have to pin this collar to that shaft but we can only do that when everything is together because we need pressure on it. We need everything to hold it in place. So now that everything is in place, I can go ahead and take this out here. Okay, so the setup here is we're getting ready to drill for an eighth inch roll pin. I have it already spotted. And the way I have this set up is this collet is gripping both this bushing and the gear blank. And I also have this machinist jack in here to put pressure on this collar so that it doesn't turn. So that should hopefully lock everything down and if we go slow enough we should be able to get through it. So now without touching anything, I'm going to go grab my roll pin. Alrighty, final assembly here. Get the roll pin in place. We're just going to pull that off. 
that on. Put that back on there. She's nice and snug. Okay, so that's snug in. Can still spin fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that's just a piece of brass in there, and he has the screw. And there it is. So now our actual backlash in our worst part of the, of the saddle, which is probably right about there. So I'm going to set zero. Is now, actually, you come back around to zero. So before I was getting like 50, 55. Now, Getting like nine or ten. Yep, between nine and ten there. That's my back. So significant improvement. And that's still with the worn nut. So we're a little stiff on this outside edge here. But that's probably from that's from the gib more than anything. So our project is complete. We now have a large dial and when I cinch this down hand tight it takes a decent amount of force to move it so I'm not going to accidentally hit it. And that's the reason for actually pinning that bushing to this here. I actually would Okay, so thanks for watching guys, and this project is now done, and we made some immense improvements to the machine. So we went from somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 55 thousands worth of backlash to like 9 or 10, which I'm ecstatic about. Also, we have that large dial that we can actually see, and it's actually a lot more smoother with those bearings in place. So everything turned out great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this series, and I'll think of something up in the future, and we'll start making some videos on that. Uh, shop time is going to get a little bit scarce for a little bit, for a little while, but every chance that I get to come down here and make videos, I will be doing it. So, again, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. And also, special thanks to Brad for giving me that large dial. Without him, project would have never happened. So, um, hope to see you guys on the next video.